three, two, one, zero. All engines. Whether you've been married one or twenty plus years, at some point, you realize you were married into crazy. And that's what our podcast is all about. We offer love, laughter, and a dose of reality as we unpack this crazy thing called marriage. So sit back, relax, and get your ear hustle on. It's time to start the conversation. All right, let's go. She just wanted to take a a moment just to tell you how grateful I am, uh, how impacted my life has been uh, this past month, uh, just diving into these coaching sessions with you uh, and just your style has been phenomenal in helping me to really see myself for who I am and to to accept that and to be able to walk in that and know that uh, I am who I am for a reason. Uh, and I am just super grateful, super thankful uh, just for you pouring into me and, and pulling things out of me uh, that I knew were there, but just to know how to tap into them. And so I'm super grateful for the personal coaching. I'm looking forward to continuing our coaching sessions and I can't wait to see, uh, what this journey takes me, but definitely this past month has been the most transformational in my life. And I am super grateful and thankful, uh, to have you coaching me. Welcome to episode 116 of the Married into Crazy podcast. I'm Lovey. I'm Snooks. And we want to welcome everybody back to the podcast. You have so many choices. We say this every single week, but we feel very blessed and honored that you choose to spend some time with us. Mm -hmm. So we have a special treat for you. It is Thanksgiving week. Um, This is being released on Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving. And if you think back to episode 110, we had one called, uh, this one's for the single folks. And we talked about a variety of things. There were some topics that came up that we felt like we weren't really qualified to discuss (laughs) because we've been out of the game for so long. So we said, you know, we need to put a panel together Mm -hmm. and that's what you're about to hear. We have six different singles, three men, three women Mm -hmm. from across the United States sharing their, their different backgrounds, their um, different perspectives. What they may deem as some challenges that they have or that they have had in dating and meeting people and, um, just where they are with themselves as far as dating. Absolutely. And I think it's going to be a true blessing. And um, it just reminds each and every one of us that we have a lot to be thankful for. This crew that you're about to hear, we're thankful for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, because we feel so blessed, I just want to let everybody know that we're going to actually go one step better. There are some reduced prices that are on our website for the Married Into Crazy uh, limited edition t-shirts as well as the uh, I Can't Can for Couples. But we're going to go one better. We're going to take, I haven't even told Snooks about this yet. I'm going to take 20%. (laughs) I'm finding out with (laughs) y'all. We're going to do 20% off of the t-shirts as well as the uh, couples I Can Cans for not just Black Friday, but Black Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Black Month, Black Rest of the Year. So it's going to be, they're on sale for the remainder of the year. 20% off the t-shirts. Get them. Um, because we are looking at changing some designs, maybe down the road into 2021, 2022. That's a lot of twos I just I said. Like, what? 2022. I know. But anyway, it's on sale. So go get yours over at marriedintocrazy.com. And don't forget that if you're listening to this and you haven't registered for the workshop at the end of the month, you heard the preamble. Uh, it's a lot of fun. We've got quite a few people that are already signed up. Oh, that's Saturday. That's this Saturday. Okay. So don't delay. Please, 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 please. The information's in the show notes. Go register, join the fun. We're going to, uh, you know, you have an opportunity to do a needs analysis when it comes to communication and we're going to break it down what it means to be crazy. And we're going to go into a little bit of an assessment, some background personality assessment as to why we choose to do the things that we do and it'll help you in communicating with your spouse or your loved one. But aside from all that, buckle up your seat. Has that how they say, you know, buckle your seat belts yeah, or whatever. Your seat belts on. Because the podcast that's coming to you right now, it is titled Tinder versus the Booty Call. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a lot of fun. So I hope you enjoy this. Be sure to go ahead and let us know what your thoughts are on this particular podcast and any other suggestions, recommendations, or topics you want us to talk about um, directly at our Iron Tribe uh, text line, where it comes directly to us. And that's 918-351-2799. So again, that's 918 918- 
me, 512799. All right, here's the podcast. Oh, what? Did we say happy Thanksgiving? Uh, if we didn't, we didn't just now. Okay, now happy Thanksgiving. You all stay safe. All right, here you go. All right, so um, we want to welcome you to episode 116. 116? 116. And just so you know, Snooks and I have a variety of people on this particular interview with us. Because if you think back to episode 110, um, where we said this one's for the single folk, um, a question came up on that one that we weren't prepared or even qualified to discuss because we were no longer single. So we committed to having a podcast with a panel of single people from across the nation. And that's what we're doing today. So are we going to introduce ourselves? Or are you just going to start talking? Oh, go ahead. Jump in. I'm Snooks. And I'm Lovey. <laughs> <laughs> and so, of course, you're listening to Married Into Crazy with Snooks and Lovey. So what I'm going to do is kind of go around the horn the way I see them. I'll say a name, and I want you to kind of introduce yourselves, give us a little background so we can jump into this. So to my left, with, I see Miss Overland, Overland Affo. How are you doing? Doing great, guys. Thank you so much for having us. I'm Overland, and I'm coming from Sugar House, Utah originally from American Samoa. I am gratefully single and um, I can't wait to learn from everybody and share. Fantastic. Uh, would you mind sharing your age? I mean, oh, I, yes. I, I'm asking, I know you're not supposed to my ask bad, my age, bad. No, I, I remembered, but I forgot at the same time, but I'm 42. Okay. And status as far as been married, never been married. Never I know been you said married. Single. never been married. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and then we have, uh, so we have Utah, and then uh, Arthur. How are you doing, sir? How are you doing? Um, my name is Arthur Papillon, better known as AP, from Miami, Florida, Haitian descent. Um, I'm single, was married, divorced now, um, 47 years old. Um, and haven't dated for 10 years. Haven't dated for 10 years. Oh, this is going to be no, really interesting. Since I was this, since I was divorced. Yeah. Okay, good. We're looking forward to some of your input as well. Um, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> and so me, myself, and I. Hi, um, I'm Felicia. I'm from Sacramento, Felicia Pridgen. I'm happily divorced and happily single. And I am 52 years old. Okay. Did I miss any of your questions? <laughs> I, I, I think you're golden. I think you're okay. golden. It'll come out at some point. Okay. Uh, Mr. Victor Jones. What's going on, everybody? My name is Victor Jones. I'm holding down here in Tampa, Florida. Um, I'm turning 30 next month. Um, I'm happily single. I've never been never been married, not, not even divorced, no kids, none of that stuff. And I'm like, so I'm holding down liquor talk, you know what I'm saying? We got great episodes. Um, I think I think I hit everything. So now I'm looking forward to just hopping in here, talk to other people and network. And I'm just, like I said, I'm also happy the, the, the crew from Married in the Crazy finally have me back on here. So I'm just happy to be here. Amen, amen. If, if uh, those of you in the audience, if you recognize Vic's voice, it's because uh, you may have tuned in to his podcast, Liquor Talk, when we were promoting it when he had us on there um, several months ago now. But it was a lot of fun. We had a blast, lots of laughs. Um, I highly, highly recommend um, that if you get an opportunity to put Liquor Talk in your queue. It's liquor. Liquor Talk. Liquor Talk. <laughs> All right. All right, and so let's go ahead and continue. So we have, uh, so that was a gentleman, so let's go with the lady, Dominique. Hello, hello. Thank you guys so much. Um, so I am Dominique. I am from Denver, Colorado. I am recently committed into a relationship, but was single for quite some time before that. <laughs> I used to call myself super single. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Oh, and I am 29 years old. Okay. Last but not least, uh, least. Leaf. I know, right? Leaf. I got a little lisp going on now. Um, Anthony Manalo. Yeah. Yo, what is going on, everybody? What is going on? 
Um, y'all can't see it, but Victor, I just have to say this. That shirt that you got looking on, if you single, happily single, you're going to put you yourself in trouble. That shirt is way too nice. That you're looking like that shirt is making you look like an absolute snack over there. Y'all can't see it, but I'm, I'm going to say it. I will say that right there. Um, Anthony Manalo calling out of San Jose, California, IA. I am 28 years young, and I am happily single right now. Okay. Uh, we got a lot of happily single people on this. I guess I should have did some better casting. I needed to get somebody that was angrily single. <laughs> I was, so I can speak from that place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was too. I was angrily single, but I was like, you know what? Let me be happy to be on this podcast. Yeah. You know, so to respond to Ant, whenever somebody has you on their podcast, you got to look your best. Yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
that my wife was the first one <laughs> <laughs> to come up with the answer. Oh, snacks. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't sweat. Wow. Yeah. Don't sweat. That's going to be a whole other um, podcast right there. Whatever. You got to keep it with the times, okay? I'm it's just saying. Of, you got to keep it with the times. So is it Anthony, me or does... Basically... Go ahead. I'm sorry. sorry. Is it me or does Ant look like a movie star? With like, <laughs> yes. like you talking he about, <laughs> bruh, but you you look like a movie star, my SDA brother. Uh, so you better stop. I'm sorry. Right, he'll I'm be sorry. right back. The internet's acting up, so he's gonna come back in, in right. just a moment. So basically, Anthony say he's looking for Mrs. Wright, not Mrs. Wright now. And I think that, that it seems like I've I've heard that too, where what people seem to be the uh they're always oh what's, what's right now not looking for longevity <laughs> or long haul i think that's the biggest problem um people don't want to commit anymore um and then the lies they come into telling you in the beginning and then once they're caught they can't get out of it um but i just think the commitment or they're not finished with their last relationship but they want to strangle a uh, string a carrot in front of you to have you wait but at my age now, I used to care about being in a relationship, but now at 52, I think once I hit 50, it doesn't, doesn't matter at this point. If it happens, it happens. I'm happy with me. I do me. I think it's probably will be even harder for someone to even come in now. I'm not saying I won't accept it. I'm just not looking. If it happens, it happens. And as he was saying, I'm a Christian, so I have certain standards. When you're in your 20s, you have certain standards. When you're when you're in your 30s, your standards change a little more. At 40, they change. And I think at 50 right now, my what I'm looking for, I, it just hasn't. And I'm not even looking. God's gonna bring them to me. I'm not even looking right now. When God brings them to me, that's that's when it'll happen. But right now, my my goals are so different right now than they were. 20 years ago. Okay. That's good. Anyone else? So I, I agree with everybody what you're saying. Um, I think just like what I said at the beginning, um, I'm not hatefully single or happily single, but when you're in a gratitude of singlehood, then you're able to do what Felicia says, like trust in the Lord that he's going to bring that person. But also um because the heavenly father is going to bring him him. but it's like no but you got to put yourself position yourself in certain situations have that avenue to bring the person instead of just saying like oh i'm just gonna sit back and wait um so for me being gratefully single helps me um, work on myself and have hope because i think that's the biggest challenge for society, we all lose hope in being single. We think that if we're single, we're not blessed, but if we're married, we're more blessed when really you're blessed by just being a whole self, your whole self, so that person could come along and help you and just make you happier. Yeah. I wasn't saying, Orvalyn, that I'm just sitting and waiting. I'm I'm a very active person. I- Oh no, Felicia. <laughs> Okay, I was talking about my best friend, not you. Oh, okay. So, sorry, sorry. No, that's thought okay. I was talking about you. No, no, no. I was just saying, but I mean, when people do say they're waiting on God, but you do have to put yourself out there and get yourself in situations. Um, like I said, I'm very active. I travel. I've um, been part of a, a book project that I put out a couple of years ago. I praise dance. I'm in the church. I mean, when activities were going on, I was out in them. So but I'm uh, at this point in my life, I'm just not putting up with the lies anymore. I put up with them for, for a long time, you know, just wait. And that's, I mean, even when I do meet somebody, I'll ask them, ask them um, a series of questions. It's the same question just to see how they'll answer it. And they, they, they aren't smart enough to realize what I'm asking them. And it ends up that they're usually living with somebody or they're in this committed relationship. Oh, we're not happy. We'll get out of the relationship. So it's just what I choose to put up with. When my 30s, I, you know, I dibbled and dabbled and put up with things after my um, divorce, but my mind space was in a different place. So that's why I allowed different things to happen. But I've, I've seen a lot, done a lot, and I'm just at a different space. So I'm just not 
putting up with things now. And like I said, I'm 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 okay with it. Um, at one point, I probably was ang- one of your your as they call them an angry black female about a relationship. But now, I, it doesn't matter. I'll walk away quicker than I would to choose to stay in something and be unhappy. So you both, you both talked about or mentioned not staying in one place, you know, definitely no relying on God, on your faith, um, but also being active, you know, go out and doing things. So what does that look like now? I'm curious, you know, to, cause we don't know. I don't know the last time we've been in a club. So I'm just curious. I was there last week. No, I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> Tinder Meeting her date on Tinder. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> uh, so I'm trying to figure out. All kind of stuff Whoa. coming out right now. <laughs> <laughs> the show is called Married in the Crazy. We might have to change the acronym. Yeah. But no, seriously. Like, so what, what does that look like when it comes to, um, I, I hate that phrase, getting out there, but what, I, I can't think of anything different, but when you're being more active, trying to meet other individuals, putting yourself in a, a, an environment where you can meet like-minded individuals that aren't going to be tripping and, and playing games or what have you, what does that look like? Um. I would say it looks like like sometimes getting into Facebook groups and then setting up meetings with people in and that's how like it's just setting up meetings with people and to see like minded individuals because there are like so many singles groups on Facebook, but you realize some are are full of it, then some are actually legit people actually looking to meet people. And then you know it's real when they're setting up meetings and we're all just hanging out at different bars and everybody just networking and talking and not even thinking about singleness. I, I was on an app. Was oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I didn't even know that was a thing. But you said yeah. you met on an app? I was, no, we didn't meet on an app. We met actually at a wedding. Um, but <laughs> I was on an app before that. I was on an app called Hinge. I text one of my good friends and I said, which app should I like look at? Because he, he was in a, he's one of my best friends and he was in a relationship and they met on an app. And so, um, he said, you're not going to like Tinder. That's not up your alley. <laughs> so do Hinge. It's a little more classy. Uh, nothing against either of them. That's just what he told me. Um, so I was on Hinge and I went on two dates from it. So I was just trying to meet people and see what was happening. Because, yeah. I've so done that. Me... Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I was gonna say, that was I've actually done... my next question. I've done How many the apps. people? I've done the apps and they just at the time when I did them I found a lot of jerks and jokes and lies the person would come up and the picture they posted was from like 10 to 15 years ago it wouldn't even be the (laughs) it wouldn't even and I'm sitting in my car and I'm looking over I'm like dude this ain't this Yes, I learned I learned that too. So which is why sometimes I'll ask them straight up, do you have an Apple or Android? And we're gonna do we're gonna either FaceTime or we're gonna hit this Google chat beforehand, right. you know what I'm saying? Right. Or even do a Zoom meeting beforehand, right. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if I'm feeling suspicious. I mean, I guess from my end, I mean, I'm posting current pictures and what I'll tell somebody real quick, because I'll change my hair color, my hairstyle or whatever. I said, the only thing that's changing on me is my hair. This face you see is going to be the face you're going to see. But my hair may be blonde tomorrow, may be gray tomorrow. Who knows? (laughs) (laughs) But that's what you, and that's even in my conversation. But I guess sometimes I'm too real and that may hurt me and, you know, with a lot of people, but I don't care. I'm going to be me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll admit, well, I admitted this on my guys only podcast, like a week ago when we was talking about singing this and the fellas, what hurt me is sometimes I'll look, I want somebody that's similar to me. You know what I'm saying? If, if I go out the wrong way to make things happen, I kind of want somebody to match my energy. So mm-hmm. I'll go ahead and admit that, you know what I'm saying? So you're not the only one that, you know, goes through being realness, you know, so what about the rest of you? Have you all um, done the the apps? What is it? eHarmony. Are you um, telling me? Because you obviously know. <laughs> uh, wow. <laughs> she um, knows Tinder, nothing else. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I know Tinder. No. <laughs> I haven't, have I haven't guys, used. I've tried the, I've tried the apps. Um, and what I found is it's, for me, it was depressing because there was no substance there. Um, 
and and I no shade on Dom because grateful you met somebody off the app, but like oh no, you said you met somebody at the wedding, right? At a Sorry. wedding, yeah. My bad. <laughs> it's all good. But it's like all some people I've known people that get married off the apps, but um the times that I felt like depressed about being on those apps because there was no substance was like when I walked away from it, I was like, oh, Heavenly Father is protecting me because I'll need to be on those apps right. for for me, but it could work for somebody else. So it, it could be good or bad is what I'm saying. <laughs> right. And I have known uh, people I, who have gotten married off of the app. I mean, but yeah. one is still married after maybe about 10 years are still married, but I do know a couple that divorced and I think things started coming out. But I think that can happen with anybody. So I have seen good or bad just didn't work for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The only thing I've I've never about used... about apps is sometimes people will match with you but not communicate. And it's like, what's the, I'm, just, I'm saying, saying, what's the point in matching with somebody if I'm going to reach out to you and you're not going to communicate? So it's like, I'll be getting annoyed with the apps. So it's like, I'll be on that for a few days and then I'll just, I'll just delete the apps because I just get tired of the same, running to the same things with the apps. But it's the same thing as meeting somebody in person. They can make themselves look any way on that app. Any way they choose, that's what they're gonna put mm -hmm. on the app. And so that's what so that's how you get matched. But once you guys start communicating one on one, that's when the truth's gonna come out. Mm -hmm. Arthur, what were you gonna say? I've never used an app. Um I've never gone on dates like 10 years, nothing. And actually, the first time I actually did this speed round dating something, which was a couple of weeks ago, which Fawn, Fawn invited everybody in the singles ministry to. And that's the first time that I ever did anything like that. And I was on the screen with like 80 people doing some thing. And there was like 80 people and there was only five guys. And it was <laughs> crazy. Let me tell you. He was like, it was, show. It so was five guys. Five guys. I'm I'm no joke. It was Rubido Church, Seventh day Adventist Church did this. And this was man, let me tell you. Five guys. And um it was quite interesting. Um, but I'm never probably doing that ever again in my life. <laughs> um, well look, man, if there are 80 people, five guys, you don't gotta do it again because you just got like the lion's share. You came up out of there like I got digits. I got all these numbers. <laughs> Not a one, bro. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> but it's got to be a match. Yeah, Arthur, <laughs> you don't need to do it again. Go ahead and send that send that church information over to me. I'll go ahead and take <laughs> <laughs> You know, and I'm not hating on Tinder. Somebody might, one of our listeners might work for Tinder. Some, look, <laughs> let's, let's keep it real. I have three grandchildren as a result of Tinder, so. That's not a good endorsement. Well, it's a good thing that. Right. <laughs> not a good endorsement. Are and they're married and they yeah. are in love and doing great. <laughs> so blessings do abound. Yeah. And oh. uh, my sister-in-law, she met her husband not on Tinder but on a from a dating app. So mm -hmm. I, there's several people actually I know that have been able to sustain a relationship, get married and they're still happy. So So are those things still relevant when you look at like um eHarmony and what was it? Dating a farmer.com or whatever it's called. Farmers, farmers only. Com. Oh, farmers, farmers only dot com. Wow. Yeah. Those commercials used to kill me. They were funny. I believe it, it 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 all has to do with your circumstance sometimes too. For myself, um, you know, at the time going from transition of uh being totally disabled to partially disabled and, and you know, no one's running to your house or your hospital door knocking on the door like hey you want to go on a date like or so it's 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 kind of difficult to think about how you're actually going to go into even speaking to somebody um without them bringing up your circumstance um which then i learned that my circumstance really has nothing to do with who i'm speaking to and what i'm doing um and if they understand and get to know who i am then you know it'll all work because i think i'm a great guy there you go. That's what's up. Let's go. That, you are. Isn't that where it begins? Doesn't it begin with you know um, understanding our, our self worth, our own value? Um, I know yeah. that Snooks and I and several people on, on in this panel 
uh, our coaches. And, and we spent a lot of time reviewing our own, what we call a disc assessment or flight assessment. We have certain results that we look at to understand, understand ourselves better and what we can contribute to every environment that we're in. Cause it always changes, right? It's always dependent upon the situation we're in. But I think that when you understand yourself better, then it helps you understand who you're coming in contact with as well. And, and potentially giving you a better read on what you need. I mean, nobody, but we all know how it is when we go to the grocery store, you go to the grocery store and if you have a list, you're pretty, you know, you feel pretty good when you walk out of there because you stuck to your list, you got everything, but you know what it's like when you're hungry or, and you know, I, I know back in the days we call it being thirsty, <laughs> but, but we know if you're hungry and you walk into that grocery store without a list, you come out with all kinds of chocolate pretzels and, and beer. And, you know, I mean, you got so many things that, you know, I just knew I wanted something, but I came out with all the things that I really didn't need. And I, yeah. and I feel like some of the single people that I talk to sometimes we have that same type of experience that when it's, am I wrong in my assessment? Yeah, you know, that's so deep, Uncle E. I can take that one. So I've been, I've been doing a lot of deep diving and I've just been realizing that a lot of the reasons why I, I am single and a lot of the reasons why there were, it was one way attraction, either someone was attracted to me and I was like, oh no, I'm not having it. It's like, you're not the right person or I was attracted to somebody else and it didn't work. A lot of it started with myself and a low level of self-confidence. Like even if I were to find a person and we were to date and we were to be in a good relationship, my mentality would have been like, oh, you were not worth it. You were not good enough. So my mindset would have been to sabotage the relationship anyways. And I've been in situations where I just sacked relationships because I thought they were going to end. I'm not proud of it. I'm just saying that's what happened because this low level of self-esteem that well, was rooted in something childhood. Well, as soon as I start to uncover that, it's like, okay. Now I'm, I'm, a, I'm on a firm foundation. Now I can actually start to build something. I think, um, and I appreciate what you just said, Anthony, and, and even actually all of y'all, because if you think about it, what is, what is that um, uh, FOMO, fear of missing out? I think yeah. that is one thing that may keep you stuck in a bad situation, you know, because you think that society let's just keep it real you know if you're not married by a certain age if you don't have kids by a certain age if you never have kids society tends to eh, what's wrong with her or you know and, and I'm just going to speak from the woman's perspective because it's not like I, I don't feel like men get looked down upon if they don't have children or if they've never been married by a certain age so it's like you put yourself in a situation just to to fit in it's almost like you feel like you have to conform and then when you feel like you have to conform, you end up just accepting whatever, because that's what it looks like. It's supposed to look good. It doesn't necessarily have to be good. It just needs to look good. So. Hmm. Agreed. Hmm. I'm picking back up now. Society might not look down on our men, but our families, they are better believe they're giving us a hard time. Like, Oh, or when you gonna meet somebody? When we gonna have kids? When you gonna get married? <laughs> um, like I remember one time I came home, some of my mom was like, "When you gonna make me a grandmother?" Or when you and sometimes I know my mom is eager to see me date people and stuff because I know a sign of that. Go going back to y'all, the one episode of my podcast she actually promoted on her page was the episode I had you all on, and I'm like. Everybody else I did podcasts with, they all said the same thing. Your mama's eager to see you get married. I'm like, if that's the one episode out of all of the episodes she promoting, that's the one episode she wants to promote because she's probably eager to see you get married. So us men, we might not catch it from society, but we're catching it from our families and sometimes and some of our friends. Okay, yeah. that's real. That's good. Can I, can I piggyback off of that really quickly? Man, I have one aunt ask me the same question every single time. It's like she gets she gets my family on the phone call. She's like, "Oh, are you dating yet? Like, are you where is your girlfriend yes. right now?" I'm just like, "This is the worst question in the world." It's like, why do you keep asking me that? Right? I'm like, I got to, I'm to the point now where it's like, "Oh, she's on the phone. Okay, I'm busy. Right? I, I, I can't <laughs> deal with it. I don't want to deal with it. I'm busy. I'm busy not talking to you, and you asking me that question. I'm good." Listen, that's why I haven't really dealt with some of my family members in a while. And they only like 30 minutes away from me because I remember one time I came home from college, my uncle Strev asked me, when was the last time you got some, you know, what, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, seriously, uncle, you really want to ask me that? I'm coming listen, home from college and this is what you ask? Listen, I, I get that question, boy. Woo! It keeps coming. You, you, 
I'm like, oh, what do you think is going to happen? Like, um, you know, for, for, for men, it's kind of strange sometimes being single and in a situation where you really, you're not sure what you can or can't do because of a certain circumstance, right? And you really don't know how it's going to affect the other person, right? Oh, how, how is she going to look at me rolling up to her in this chair, um, asking her to go out, like, and all these things and our minds start playing tricks on us. And a lot of times it's not even really what they're thinking, right? It's a man thinking of what a woman is thinking. And she's probably looking at it saying, wow, I'd like to get with them to actually help build him back up, right? That's, that's more of what they would be thinking of instead of the other that sometimes guys get at. So uh, that came to my mind. So I just had to say that. I know well, that's it. well, and it's real, right? Because look, we're talking about all these esoteric things regarding relationships, but <laughs> let's keep it real. Um, when we get to discussions about Adam and Eve, when we get to discussions about male, female, um, sex is always a component of it. After marriage. We promote <laughs> post-marital sex. <laughs> But the second letter in our moniker and crazy is real. So let's keep it real. Um, Jesus is in the beginnings of forgiveness. So no, I just, <laughs> every night you go ask for forgiveness. <laughs> there was a point in my life when I did. I may, not have been, I may not even ask every other night. I'm just like, it was like, I'm just going to put this forgiveness in a bank and I'm going to collect it on Sunday. <laughs> learning new things wow okay yeah, me, me too miss tinder <laughs> whoa 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 bang bang <laughs> bang shots fired mm. no but but let's let's but let's jump into that because when you're talking about that is you know the the, the elephant in the room right that's the thing that we don't want to talk about we yes, we want to meet somebody we talk about we want these qualities we want somebody that's financially stable and responsible mm -hmm. we want all these different things but when it's all said and done, you do want somebody that's going to be able to be equally yoked in the sexual arena as well. But with that said, how difficult is that? Because people have, you know, standards. You talked about standards when you're in your 20s, in your 30s, in your 40s, in your 50s. But there's, I've heard mention of your faith as well as Christians. How does that play into, you know, your ability to really insert yourself in the dating world today? Uncle, yeah, I can take this. Um, so for me, our culture, we are very big on God. Um, everything is God first, then family, then self. But what I've learned in BU, it's God first, then me, then family, then everybody else. Um, <clears throat> with, with chastity or not having sex. At, so I've never my whole life, um, and it's weighed on my self-esteem because I was like, oh, maybe this is why I'm single because I've never had sex. And so I'm not desirable to somebody. But what I've learned through the years, whether you've had sex or not, um, you're still worthy of being with. But you have to, what Anthony was saying before, like he, he was doing the work from within to just be a better person and like, go for relationships that's how I think when I hit about 35 and up to this point I was like it's not even about that the right person is going to want you whether or not you've had sex and so that's very nice. true I think well, the I, right person respects it mm -hmm. sorry Snooks where are you going no, I was I was uh, going where you were go ahead yeah I think the right person respects it and I think the right person respects your decisions um and how you decide to live your life and especially um in regards to religion and things that you hold hot in high regard um i just think that yeah um i've always gone with that belief and it's taken a lot of conversation and a lot of talking around that area um which is a very scary area to talk to people about um especially when things may have like started to go too far, well, things like that. So it, um, it's a sensitive topic, but if it's something that matters to you and something that you hold dear, it's worth talking about. And it's worth having somebody who respects that. Yeah. Totally that's good agree. stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And shout out to the transparency of Lennon and Dom Dom. Definitely appreciate that. Um, bringing it back to Snooks's question. 
I think we losing, at least in my circle, we don't talk about it, right? So the fact that we do not talk about it, and if we do talk about it, it's to the extent that Uncle E talks about it. It's like, or that uh, Snooks recommend, it's like, oh, sex comes after um, covenant, after marriage, right? And that's that's the end of the conversation. But the challenging thing is, it's like, since we don't talk about it, it's, we're automatically, we need that information because there's like a natural like thought process. It's like, oh, I'm curious. So the world's going to start to feed us like, okay, you're looking at, uh, at, the, at the fast stuff. You're looking at the stuff that it shows on TV and the movies. And that's what it's supposed to look like. And we're just automatically just intaking this because we have this curiosity and we're not talking about it. We loop. So I want to share. Um, so when Levy and I, we first got together. Why are you laughing? So we first got together. Um, I was celibate. So, I'll, you know, we're fully transparent. I was not a virgin when we got married, but I was celibate. <laughs> I was acting. <laughs> yeah. But I was I was celibate and there were relationships prior to that, that I, I, I liked someone. They liked me. But when it came to I, I was very upfront. Well, I'm not about having sex. You know, I want to wait until I get married to to have sex and. And sometimes people look at that like, well, if you're not a virgin, then why are you waiting? But it's like, because that's what I want to do. That's what my faith is. I want to wait. And it wasn't just guys that were, I felt like they were kind of tuned out about it. Even some of the women that I knew that I worked with, when I said that I wasn't, you know, we were, we didn't have sex or we hadn't had sex and no one believed me. They were just like, well, what's wrong with them? I mean, you know, it's like, there's always something wrong if you're not having it. And so it was like, nothing is wrong, but that just shows where, as far as I'm concerned, that the values are with them. If, if every relationship, it has to be about oh, the physical part. I mean, intimacy is one thing, but you don't always have to have sex. And if someone cannot wait for you or someone cannot respect that decision, then that tells me then they're not the someone that deserves that gift because that's exactly what that is. Overling, um, I applaud you because a lot of women and men would not be able to stick to those values. So don't ever feel ashamed or don't ever feel um, bad about it because hats off. Not everyone can say that, you know, that they're still a virgin. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. You know, and, and you're not alone because and first and foremost, I appreciate the transparency of everyone um th that's huge i know that when snooks and i met um she was celibate as was i but i i called it something different i called myself a born again virgin <laughs> and i thought i had coined the phrase but you i hear people tossing it around nowadays but but i was because i was a single parent so but it was one of those things where i was highly promiscuous early on and then um just reached a point where it was just kind of there was a deadening if you will um I don't know how to call it anything else. It was just hollow. It was a hollowness. There wasn't a need. There was something else that I was more focused on, um, which was my, my child. And, and I wasn't even looking to meet someone. Um, but you guys know that story. If you don't, go back to episode 39. We guys can check that out. Um, <laughs> but it's one of those things where there are people nowadays that are starting to really uh, hold on to that chastity. We have a niece that is in... Um, Georgia. Georgia. She's in Atlanta. She graduated from the University of Georgia uh, about a year ago. And she uh, she's going to kill me because she and two of her girlfriends have a podcast um, that is about three young women in their early 20s that are all virgins. And they focus on yeah. talking about what it's like to be young women of color in Atlanta, a very you know active area, um, and to have those those I won't call them vows of chastity, but that mindset of when I find them, I'll know. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with it at that point. But until then, somebody has to earn the right to be with me. Um, and, and that's their mindset. But so over, I share that because over, I don't want you to think that you're doing something wrong or you're, you're a unicorn. I hate that phrase, by the way. But <laughs> as I say it, I know. Uh, I think it's great. And I applaud those young ladies. Um, if I could go back, 30 something years, I probably would change. Cause I think a lot praise of times when name, you bring, right. pardon? I said, praise his name, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think a lot of times we allow uh, sex to, t to control the relationship. Mm -hmm. 
and you don't get to know the person, you don't have conversations, you don't see what that person is really about because you brought uh, the sex into the um, relationship so soon mm -hmm. before you knew them. And that just kind of takes over at that point. And you'll stay in it maybe because it's good or whatever, but you don't know that person. And then reality starts setting in and you're like, and then you're stuck. So I do applaud those young ladies for taking that initiative because you don't find many, many uh, women or men who will do that. I mean, you got kids 15 and 16 years old now having kids. I mean, I couldn't even imagine. I didn't have my son until I was 25. So I couldn't even imagine, you know, at being 15 or so. But I, I think with anything, just you have to respect yourself um, when entering into a relationship. And then you have to know and love yourself in order to get that from your partner. Because you won't get it because you don't even know what love is or how to love if you can't love yourself. Come on, that's real. Uh, so, Uncle E, sorry, real quick. Um, just thank you guys for your flowers and um, everybody that's spoken on what I said. But I want to make it clear to what I said before. You're not any better if you're a virgin to those who have lost uh, not lost, but has experienced sex. Um, I feel like our society puts so much emphasis on one or the other, but what Felicia was saying, like if you could find yourself loving yourself, whether you give away your virginity, <clears throat> it was your choice. I think Dom touched on it too. It was your choice and the right person is going to respect and love you and hope and like come to that realization because I I do feel a sort of respect when people are like oh you're so good but I didn't come to this point with this choice on my own it was all power of prayer and my devotion to Heavenly Father but also I had a support group when I did desire that or I was in situations where I could have had the opportunity to have sex um, I always had somebody strong to make me stronger so I just wanted to throw that out there too, that I didn't do this all by myself. You know, let's touch on that. Because in Married into Crazy, we always talk about belonging to an iron tribe or creating your iron tribe. An iron tribe is like, we, we, we go back to Proverbs 27, 17, where it says, as iron sharpens iron, you know, and you know the rest. But what we do is we tweak it a little bit when we say as iron sharpens iron, we as couples to sharpen each other. But let's take it a step further. When we're talking about singles, in your, in your collective, the people that you surround yourself with, Overland just talked about having a, you know, a strong individual or strong people in her network and her group around her that supported her. How's everyone else? When you're in your, you know, your, I know we have, you know, I got my boys or I got my girls, what have you, but do you really have that, your iron tribe, that, that crew around you that supports you in, for lack of a better phrase, your singleness um, in a positive way, not I'm going to get you, look, we're going to get you laid today. We're going to get you a man or we're going to get you a woman or, you know what I mean? Not that respect, but somebody that says, I see you and I support you and I'm going to help you in your journey as you need me to. Do you have people like that? And how did you come across them? I did. Yeah. Um, oh, go ahead, Arthur. No, no, ladies first, please. <laughs> um, for everybody who knows me knows that I am super open and I just talk about whatever. Um, and <laughs> I'm an open book. If you ask me a question, I'll give you an answer. Um, so <laughs> careful what you ask me, but like, that's how I am with all of my friends, especially like I am super open. Um, and so I have always had that support, I think, because I have been authentic with them. Um, and I am who I am. You're either going to like me or you're not. Um, and so um, I think being authentic and fully you, especially with that group, because um, for some people, it's, it's a closed group that they can only be that person with. Um, so I think that that support is vital. And I've had that support by just being super open um, and saying, this is how it is. This is how I am. This is, this is what it is. And that's the way with me. Um, and so like, uh, yeah, we've just had some moments where it's like, I don't know if other people <laughs> should know about that. Um, but it's just like funny things that like, we're just that open with each other, that it doesn't really matter. It, you don't have a second thought about a conversation or something that happens. 
I have a select few people that I deal with. Um, I just found over time, some people you can trust, some people you can't. Some people take your information and run with it. So I do have a selected few, uh, few people, um, few singles and a couple of married people. Because, I mean, like I said, I'm not looking for it, but I do um, value their input on things that I may be dealing with. I'm, you know, I have talked to some married people and they may say, you know, tell me situations in their life. I said, well, it's not a bag of chips out here being single, you know, appreciate your, I mean, me being a person who has been divorced, it's like, okay, appreciate what you have um, and work on it because it's slim pickings out here, you know, yep. so, <laughs> my, uh, you know, work with what you got. <laughs> that's a fact. Very, very slim pickings. Wow. You know, instead that's of trying fact. to, you know, that's what a lot of people want to do. They want to get rid of what they have. And I'm like, I mean, I'll say I've been probably been, gosh, when did I get divorced? I can't even remember. Um, it's been over 15 years. Yeah. That's about to say. And I was married for 15 years. Um, got married very young. Um, but the situation, I had to leave it. It wasn't one that I wanted to deal with anymore. And I don't, I won't get into it any further but I am um, something I had to get out of but it's not it's not easy out here but like I said you do have to find a group of people that you can trust and trust with me is very important when people speak with me I don't get on the phone after the conversation girl did you hear you know that's not me a lot of times I'll just I mean I'm a good listening ear and that's what I look for in my friends and like I said I do have single people I talk with, I may have a couple even male friends that I deal with. I'm like, well, from your perspective, you know, because I've been told, like with me, people still think I'm married for whatever reason, I guess just the way I carry myself or the things, I mean, I'm gonna, I'll just say material things or whatever that I may have or just the way I carry myself. And so some men are, they, they won't approach me thinking I'm married or thinking that I am in a relationship. I'm like, well, I can't look this way because I want to and I take mm -hmm. care of myself. So that's that's something I deal with. But yeah, just if you find those those true friends, I, you know, keep them close. Yeah, that's really good stuff. And uh, definitely appreciate you for sharing that, man. Growing up, you would like see me smiling all the time. You would think like things were all good. But I think one of the most challenging things growing up was like the whole thought process was I'm not supposed to talk about stuff. I'm supposed to figure out, I'm supposed to deal with it. So growing up, I had like all these like thoughts and questions and I had nobody to talk about. And that led into me, okay, about to be transparent because that's what we're about. That's what we're doing in this space. Man, there's like this craving to be with other people. And sometimes that turns into stuff like pornography and masturbation. And I was exposed to that at a very, very young age. And that, now that I look back on it, that's something that was very scarring because man, there's, there's the way that it looks on in real life. And I would imagine, or in the movies or um, in videos, and then in real life, it's something completely different. So that started to affect my, my thought process. And now I'm happy to say that I have an accountability group and we meet every single Monday on this topic, right? And we're, we're all devoted to getting both um, pornography and masturbation out of our lives, right? And there's just, just speaking to that topic, there's something special on grace, right? Just speaking on the topic of grace, there's something special about, man, when you fall on your walk, it's like if you're pursuing after a goal and then you fall down, like you feel like, at least for me, I feel like garbage. I want to hide away. I don't want to admit it to somebody else because I feel like they're going to judge me. They're not going to accept me. I'm not good enough because I fell in my walk. I am not good enough. That's how I think they think about me. But it's one of the most impactful things when you can go to those people and say like, this is where I want to go. This is what we said we were going to do. And I fell in my walk and I wasn't able to do it. And they just meet you with grace. They're just like, yo, it's okay. Pick yourself back up. Like you were good. Like keep on going. Like you, you had that in your life for how many years? And it's only been how many years that you're, you've been battling it. Like you are good. Keep on going. And in that moment, that grace, that's something that's so powerful and uh, something I wouldn't trade for anything to have those, uh, that iron tribe that, that Snooks and Lovely likes to speak about and talk about so much. Good. Well, pick back up on um, what you were saying. Um, for me, I would say my Iron Tribe is people I do podcasts with. It's like, because that for me has become <laughs> the Iron Tribe because I'm always checking in with them. I always, always have somebody checking in. Also, as far as the singleness goes, I don't really have that because it's like I always have something to distract me and stuff. And it's like, and also picking back up where Anthony was saying is how we came up. It's like, 
also going to therapy and having a male therapist, an older man kind of guided me. That's kind of what changed my thoughts about that stuff. Cause it's like, well, I thought we also sold it in. No, it's like, that's why I would recommend to anybody that's listening to this, that's always going through stuff, get you a therapist. Cause that's the ultimate, like, Iron Tribe right there, just having that one-on-one session, they can hammer it out. Maybe there's some things they can tell you that they went through and to help you, so. That's what I'm talking about. I'm glad you with said the that. Iron... I'm sorry, go ahead. With... No, no, go ahead, please. No, just really, because I was going to say, Victor, I'm glad you said that, because a lot of times when people do say that they're speaking to a therapist or even maybe you're speaking to your pastor, people do look at you, oh, well, what's wrong with you? Why are you talking to the therapist or a psychologist or something? And I think any and anybody should reach out to um, someone of that nature and be able to talk to them. Yes, us in the black community, we really right. need to break that stigma because mental health is important. Because all years we've coming up like, oh, you're the man. It's like right. you're supposed to be strong. You're supposed to carry. No, men got feelings too. So it's like we really going for it into twenty into twenty one. We really need to just break that stigma because mental health is very important. It's like if if people would put a strong emphasis on mental health, it's like maybe there wouldn't be a, such a high number of suicides. Right. Mm -hmm. And just really quick, and I'm sorry, um, AP, um, I think this in the Black community, and it may be in other generations, I only can speak for what I know. I think just within our households, there was always so many secrets. And so yeah. we couldn't speak um, about things. I think, I think our, at least with my generation, I think we've changed that with our kids now. Um, sad to say some of you guys are about as old as my kids are. My daughter's 23. So, <laughs> so, but I can only speak for, I know in my household, it was very, things were quiet. You didn't talk about sex or things like that, but you try, I tried to do that with my kids, you know, to, to bring that to the forefront. So go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> oh, you're good. AP? Go ahead, Elder. Yeah, I forgot what point I was going to make. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, oh, the support though. Um, I, I've I've had I've for the past ten years, I could say I've I've had caregivers because I really had no choice. Um, so this year, January the tenth was the first time that I was actually like by myself for the first time in ten years. So I still have that support base which I see that they treat me like I'm this little kid. I'm 47 years old, but I'm not just talking about my, my, my mother and father, which are fortunately are still alive um, and check in on me, um, whether they're here or they're in Haiti. Uh, but without my tribe, some industry, um, entertainment industry people and my core, core group of individuals, I wouldn't have been able to have got to the point that I am right now um, so the support is really important. I, I, I keep saying, you know, divorce yourself from negative people, places, and things. Um, that's the only way you're going to have a really good, pro prosperous life because the negative people weigh you down somewhere or the other. So you won't really get across that finish line unless you lose that human weight, which happened to be other people, not your weight. Um, and for me, uh, not having a support around me because I, I know what it is to have hospital people around as support compared to your actual people and support. And the hospital people really don't know who you are and the people that really know who you are aren't really around. So sometimes that's like finding and meeting new people. Um, and like Breathe University is a place for me where I've been able to find, I've met most of everybody on here from Breathe University. Um, so it's like uh, you need to pick and choose where you go and who you use to support you because some of those same people are the same people that are putting you down. Uh, uh, me being in the hospital 27 months since uh, between January, I mean, 2008 to two years ago, um, there were times where I, I was sitting in, in the hospital bed yeah, like I couldn't speak or anything, but you have people come in. And, and so uh, I felt like I was on an after school special for those of you that are old enough to know what an after school special was, you know, when the people are sitting in the, in the hospital bed going through something and, and the people are coming up there talking saying, oh, I would have done this, 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 man, look at here, man. 
um, I don't really curse a lot, but I found out one thing about me was the word, you know, AP, they've been calling me AP since I was in elementary school. But for me, there was a special, um, you know, initial they added, you know, they called me the a-hole with purpose, right? So I would be in the hospital bed, right? I can't really speak and stuff, but I'm hearing people say this and not just, you know, I thought I was one person, then the second person, then the third person. When it comes past five people, then you start thinking, saying, oh, maybe I wasn't really the person that I thought I was. Um, you know, you start doing some reflection, but that always happened for me when I had people, real people that were around to tell me, hey, you're going in the wrong direction or you should probably look at this a different way. Um, but the support is, is really important. You know, Powerful. but I got to say, I, I love the way you guys work together, man, um, as a couple. Um, and it's very inspiring to hear um, what you went through as a couple, mm -hmm. right? Because um, like the young lady said earlier, um, for me at the point that I'm right now, I could look and say, man, if I was the person that I am right now, or really understood, I wouldn't have got divorced, even though. Um, I'm in Miami. I shouldn't have gone to cold weather. It would have mess, made my MS worse, but um, I would have been able to maneuver because at the end of the day, it's either where I look at it, it's like, well, I'm sitting there thinking about divorce. I'm like, okay, so that means you're telling me that you're telling me you would rather leave me and start over with a brand new person's garbage and baggage than to stay with me that you know that's a lot to take, right? And if you understand it that way and only that way, it'll really mess with your head. So having 10 years to go through that, you know, I didn't want to have any situation with anybody in it, but I wasn't really focused on that. And I know one thing, I wouldn't have been able to come out of a wheelchair um, and doing the things I was doing if I wasn't in a relationship because I wouldn't have had time to do it, right? To, to actually focus and exercise and and look at things differently because my mind would have been you know I'm, I'm i'm in a relationship i'm in a relationship so it's it's kind of i gotta thank god the other way because you know it kind of helped me in a way all right there's a lot of times where when we look at the things that we most desire right everything that we desire isn't necessarily the thing that we need the most at that, in that moment and I believe there's a season for everything. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there's, and seasons change. But the funny thing about seasons is they have a way of coming back as well. There's a winter every year. You know, it might be mild, might be harsh. There's a fall every single year. So just because the season changes doesn't necessarily mean that A, it's, it's a horrible thing. It just means it's something that you need to get through. You need to weather the storm. But then don't think that you got past it because there's some lessons learned in last winter that you may have to apply the next winter. I just want to, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, I just wanted to piggyback on AP is that everyone, when they get in a new relationship, they think it's Disneyland or Disney World, whatever one you want to say. And it is that way in the beginning. I mean, you got all the bells and whistles, you're getting the car door open, they're answering your calls and all that. You let a, a few months, a year, whatever go by, your calls are getting missed. You ain't, you're not getting taken out. They're not wanting to spend time with you. <laughs> the, their representatives, their representative has left the building. There you, you know, go. Everybody <laughs> has their representative there you go. That, that does their, you know, their thing for them. Their representative is gone. Right. Like, yeah. So, and that's what you, you know, got to watch out for. And then just like how you were saying, if you were in a relationship in your situation that you're currently in, God would have given you a person, hopefully that would have span that time with you and would have helped you through whatever you had to go through that person that left they weren't meant to be in your in your relationship if you felt that if you were in a relationship with that person you wouldn't have worked out and did what you had to do god's gonna god's gonna bring you somebody who was meant to be in that relationship who's gonna be your backbone and gonna be strong for you you know and gonna want to see you succeed with my ex-husband um he didn't want to see me go to school. He didn't want to see me do anything. Um, I went back to school and got my bachelor's degree in my 40s because when I was with him, oh no, I couldn't do that. 
<laughs> um, he didn't want to see me take my kids to church. Um, I'm probably one of the lead people in my church right now. I did praise dance and I had my kids in church, but that was something he didn't want for me to do because I was taken out of our household or taking time away from him. If it didn't mean that he was in the forefront, it wasn't good for us. Mm -hmm. So I thank God for removing me because I prayed. I asked God to get me out of this relationship. He got me out the best way he could. And I'll say this, he got me out alive because I wasn't in a good relationship. So he got me out alive. And I thank God every day that I can sit here and share that with people. But, you know, and just not to allow yourself to be in something that's not healthy for you. And if somebody's not supporting your dreams, I mean, not saying it's, it's not always going to be that way. There's going to be kind of friction, but there's certain things that you shouldn't allow someone to do in, in a relationship to you that's hurting you, that's disrespectful to you, that's not uplifting to you. And you should also be doing that for that person too. Absolutely. You know, it's funny. So I, I want to pivot real quick on that topic slightly. I want to go back to episode 110 because when we had that singles podcast or that the topic came up, Snook said she was not a... Oh about dating yeah she said she was not a good dater. No, i'm not a good i was a, a good dater my um how it says so my ideology is if i like you and we vibe right away i'm like okay i'm thinking it, this is something right she goes into stalker mode no i don't go into stalker mode i know what i want i don't play around so i i didn't I asked the question, I'm like, okay, so if we met and, and we got the connection, there's a vibe. And, but if we're, what is it, dating? Is it okay to go out with other people? Or are you like, do we just only see each other? Lovey said it was okay. And I, I didn't think so. Cause for me, if Lovey and I, the connection that we had, it was fierce. And had he, because we were just quote unquote dating, had he went out with another person or it was kind of like, oh yeah, I like you, but you know, I'm still, I'm going to go see this person or that person. I would have thought he was cheating and we would have never even, it would have just been the end of that. But because the dating, you know, and I keep doing the air quotes because I don't, whatever, like I said, I'm not a good dater because I guess when you date, you are allowed to see other people. I don't, I don't know. I listened to that episode and I was like, boy, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, I'm going to be so transparent. Now I'm going to look so crazy. The last date I was on was 17 years old. Okay. Wow. The experience was so bad for me. I only was in relationships. I, I don't even, I, the, the whole dating thing, like, Somebody that, that I'm speaking to, like on the phone, then going out and dating, you mean going out and speaking, eating with somebody, somebody else while I'm speaking? No, like, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I can't, I don't understand that. Thank I can't you. feel that. I, I, I'm, maybe that's my problem while I'm single because I've only been in relationships. Like I, and I've only been in relationships of people that I've known, like we've been friends and stuff like that. So it's never been a, hey, how you doing? You look nice. Uh, can I have your number? Yeah, that's not me. You got to hit me over the head with a club. Boom. <laughs> I, I like you. That's me. Um, other than that, I'm like, hey, how you doing? Oh, you need some help with something? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to help you. What do you need help with? Uh, and I have no clue. No clue. Dom could tell you. I'm, I'm, because I've spoken to her for a long time. Like, I'm... I'm the worst, like. man. I'm the worst. <laughs> You're not the worst. You're I mean, awesome. We've had long I mean, conversations, yeah, though. They've been great. All the way. I feel you. I'm, I, I might be pushing 30. I'm almost to a point where, look, somebody's just going to smack me upside the head and say, hey, I really like you. Because it's like, I've tried the whole dating thing. It's like, you you really don't get in the way. you Because it's hard to decipher whether or not they're with you for a date or they're just with you get to know you or whether or not they just want a free meal. So it's like, <laughs> It's, I'm just being real about it. Let's just let's just be honest because I've I've saw women on social media admit it. Like back in their college days, they would go out with men just for a free meal because they would go there knowing they have two dollars in their bank account and it's still just go put up with mediocre conversation just so that they can get a free meal. Listen, so man. Somebody, sorry. Go ahead, Dom. 
I've been talking a lot. Go ahead. Go I'm on. good. So that was the hardest thing with, uh, I think, the dating app with me is because I had met people organically or like friends had set us up. That happened a lot in California. Um, <laughs> and it was good and it was fun. And I was very thankful for them. Um, but uh, so I was talking to several people on this dating app and I didn't get back to some people because you match up with a lot of people and then it gets overwhelming. Um, but I ended up going on dates with two different people and I felt so weird about it um, because I went on a date with one person and then I went on a date with another person and I was like, I'm still talking to this other person. There's still all these other people on this app. I don't know what to do. Um, and so then, <laughs> then I thought I was going to date this, this guy. And so I got off of the app and my stress was gone, which was good. Um, and then I, ended up, I ended up meeting the guy that I'm dating now at, um, a wedding the weekend after my sister's wedding. And he was just super bold about it. Um, and, um, and just like, it was awesome. Um, but like, it took me by surprise because I was then in like a different mentality of like, all right, well now I got to go back on this app. I got to talk to all these people. And I ended up talking to several people at that wedding. Um, <laughs> I had a good time. Um, but, <laughs> but, um, but it was the, his personality and his, um, almost like the chase, like he was, he was chasing me and he was bold about it. And that's what attracted me to him. It wasn't anything like I get that girls do this, but like anything like, Oh, he looks like he has money or he looks like, um, all of that stuff because I thought it was all dumb. I think all that stuff is dumb. Um, because you have to have a genuine connection with somebody. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it's just funny because then after that wedding, I had, this sounds so cocky and bad, but like I had a pick of <laughs> guys who I wanted to go out with. I'm just being honest. Um, and I, I had my pick and I could have went on several dates. But that felt weird to have done that um, before. And it felt so weird to me and not gen and like disingenuous because I wasn't all in on that one person and seeing what would happen with that one person. And so I decided to just go on dates with him. I didn't go on the app and on just dates with him. And then it worked out really well. But like I, that whole concept of people peeped so me and I hated it. <laughs> so, yeah. Listen, as long as you I'm have sure standards. Yes. As long as you have standards, you're always going to yeah. have picks. Always. Listen, yeah. if, if I'm using an app, I'm going to talk to everybody, but it's like, I'm just going to go by the one that I feel the most <laughs> connection with, you know what I'm saying? I got to feel like it's, it's not, sometimes yeah. I do treat it like it's a race. I'm just like, whoever shows me the most connection, if I feel the most, I'll cut it, I'll break it off because talking to multiple people, it's like, it does get stressful. It's like, because you be forgetting who's who, so it's like, I wouldn't <laughs> recommend it. I have a question. I have a question for the guys. Uh, At what point oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh, the oh women can no. answer afterward. Okay. At what point, if you are just seeing this one person and you're going out to dates with them, you guys are hanging out, you know, you're caring about what they're doing after work. What at what point are you in a relationship with that person? Are you just still just seeing this person and you don't put a title on this relationship? That's a good question. I'm gonna take it back to something that Chad Johnson said on his podcast. Um on the I Am Athlete podcast, the show what he did with the former athlete, <laughs> NFL players. He said, if I put down my video game controller to talk to you, to see what's going on with you, I, that's how I know I'm in a relationship. <laughs> because, and, and I, I pick back up, it don't necessarily have to be the video game controller. I could be editing a podcast or whatever. If I'm stopping what I'm doing to sit down and really talk to you and come to your needs, at that point, I feel like I'm in a relationship. Okay, well, I'm, I, I'm gonna let you answer, AP. Hold on. But <laughs> I, I wasn't. I, I wasn't trying to rush to answer oh, nothing yeah. right now. Go ahead. Hey. Because okay, you say that, and um, when you approach a guy and you ask him where you're in a relationship, just because yes, you guys are spending time together, but as a woman, when I ask a guy that, well, we're not in a relationship. So I don't understand when you say that just because. 
you you are you have put down the control and you're spending time with me, but I have dealt with men and who will break their back to come see me or do stuff for me, but we're not in a relationship though. So I, that's why I asked the question because I I'm a little confused. <laughs> I, th I think it also piggybacks the communication. Like we gotta communicate, we definitely gotta communicate these things. Right, but a lot of men don't want they don't they don't want to put a label. And like you said, you said because you put down your controller or you you make time for that person, you consider that person that you guys are in a relationship. So even with the communication, you're communicating to that person, yes, I want to be with you, but it's not said that you guys are in an actual relationship. I, and also, I will say, if both, if y'all come together and say, let's just do this relationship thing, there you have a relationship. Okay. All right, AP. Uh, um, uh, <laughs> um, this is probably going to sound so old school, but man, if I have any emotional attachment, if there's any saliva that's been exchanged, um, <laughs> time or anything like that, let me tell you something. Not Go just ahead. now because I have a chronic illness, but especially now that I have a chronic illness, um, I'm not playing with nothing, especially my life. So, um, Oh yeah, oh we talking for that long? Oh oh we go together. That's that's <laughs> that's, that, 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 that's 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 the way my brain works, right? It's not like oh no, I gotta go for a couple of dates. Oh um I think Bernie Mac or who was it that used to say there were two sides of the menu? There's that <laughs> side of the menu and there's that side of the menu. So I pick accordingly, um, because I, I like I'm not into the the whole free. I would have been a bad hippie, like terrible hippie, like that whole fun love, like free love. Okay, go do that over there. I'm one of them saying, hey, you guys need to get out of here with that because I'm real personal about my. I'm not a real jealous person, for example, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm not for no one um, dilly dallying around anything that I'm like. I don't even date women that have dated my friends' friends. Like, I, that's like the no-no, you know? And I came from the entertainment industry where, you know, people used to get passed along. Like, I, I was that dude that used to be in a, um, a strip club um, with artists and stuff like that. I'm the one holding the jewelry and all the, the expensive things for everybody else because I wasn't with it. I'm still not with it. Um, but that's just me. But I also think it's also my SDA um, background, my, my, my religion and, and, and certain principles that I live by. Plus, I was more, more into business and everything. Like, I'm a real, just a real cool nerd um, at heart, um, basically. Um, and, and certain times people just look at, you know, a, a certain way that you may look, a certain way that you may talk, and they just think that they know you, but no. You got to get to know people. I mean, right now, in this day and time, I, I don't really see a lot of the communication, especially when I speak to my students, on how they communicate, you know, but then I got to think back. Um, you guys remember Ocanelli? He had that song, Put It In Your Mouth. Okay. You remember oh. um, Uncle Luke? Uh, Uncle Luke. Yeah. Yeah. Luke? yeah. Okay. okay. Luke. Now, like, I, I used <laughs> to promote... Up. I was a promoter of Uncle Luke here in Miami. So okay. a lot of the stuff is just remixed into, you know, space age thing, but mm -hmm. I still can't rock with it the same way, but I'm not gonna, you know, shun them or anything, but, but you know, that, that's, that's. And that's a big thing now, like you said, communication. I think this day and age, everybody wants to, even the, I mean, you can video chat. Yeah, that's great, but they, they're texting. They don't want to have a conversation with you. So that's that's the sad part, I think, um, what's going on in the dating. And they think, you know, they just want to text you and that's OK. And mm -hmm. to me, that's a that's a first red flag right there. If all you can do is text me and you can't call, stop texting me. <laughs> Lose See, my okay. So I want to know if that's a generational right, thing. Exactly. Lose my number. <laughs> yeah, I want to know if that's a generational thing. No, that, that happened to me, uh, Ernie, uh, just. At 52, I met a guy, I'll say it was maybe about within the last month. 
and it was just picking up some fast food or whatever. And we just started chatting. Conversation was great. Gave him my number, but all he could do was text. Mm. And I just started picking up on signs. And so finally, I, I mean, I started, I mean, I put two and two together at the, at the first meet, but he never called. It wasn't even one initial call. It was text within a week. So after by, I met him on Sunday, by Thursday, I said, please don't call me anymore. Oh, please don't text me anymore. So I gave him four days. <laughs> Did you ask him? Gave him four days. Was, is that your limit? Is no, that your, I, you got a you got a four day limit. Like no, they got, I don't they have, got five no, days. No, it's not a limit. I just I don't have time to waste. If you can't either show me how to make money or make money or have a a, a conversation with me about something, I don't have time to waste. I wasted a lot of time in my life, and at at this point in my life, I'm not wasting any more time. And I seen after Listen. four days of texting with him, that's all I was gonna get from him, and the, the conversation was not, was nothing. You know what that's like? So for what Felicia's talking about is y'all been on the internet and you go to a, to a particular site and it asks if you're a robot and then you got to pick pictures. <laughs> mm -hmm. that, that was the yes. Felicia method of dating. Like, look, are you, instead of, are you a robot? It was like, are you in a relationship? If not, click the box that says you can pick up the phone and call me and not text <laughs> and try and set me up for a booty call. So <laughs> that's real. This okay, is, so yeah. booty call, man. <laughs> I, I, boy, that's the wrong thing. Call. Booty Look, call. Uh, this is my hey, man. They exist. I, I, they yeah, exist. they do. They Wait, hold on, there. hold on. How, how do you know? No, oh, just, oh, 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 we got a whole new Here's how I know. I'm trying to figure that out. I'm very confident. I, 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 I was talking about it today on, 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 on the man's call. So the men's yeah. call. So that's what he's talking about. Yeah. Dom, right. do you have a score? He wasn't on that call. He was He was at service. Here's how I know what a booty call is. No, I didn't. No, no, no. Not that you know what it is. I'm sure you know, but because you were very confident and old, oh, yeah. and they still go on. I'm like, well, how do you know? Here's how I know. Here's how I know, Miss Tinder. Okay. Oh. oh. Have three grandchildren under the age of five, and they were all a result of Tinder. booty calls. <laughs> no, Tinder. Do you say booty? We talking about booty calls, specific. That's it. That's all. Mm -hmm. I so feel like he's trying to deviate now. Okay, <laughs> what time is this thing <laughs> over? Yeah. So now that we pivot to another topic. Uh. So, okay, so look, we've been on for a, for a hot second. I don't want to command all, all your day, but I I, I want to do something kind of quick, a rapid fire type move. I want to find out. I'm going to call you out, each and every one of you, and I want you to give me the worst dating advice you've received oh. the worst dating advice. i could go i could go on oh she didn't uh, let me call her she's like i'm going uh, uh, uh. <laughs> um so i'm the oldest of five and all of my siblings are married and my third to the youngest brother he's always worried about me and he heard that i was set up on a date with this doctor and he's like come on just marry him and keep you know your eggs are freezing or whatever I'm like, what? he's like just just think about the eggs just go and date him and marry him wow. i'm like oh so yeah that was the worst advice uh, <laughs> think about the eggs <laughs> Vic. what was the worst dating advice you've ever received the worst dating advice i ever received was from a long time ago oh man Older man, he told me straight up, man, with someone you're gonna have to spend money to get them. I'm like, you know what? That's not that's not what it is. If if that's all it is, then you know what? Oh, that ain't for me. Mm. Mm. Okay. Uh Felicia. I'll say um dating an older man, like 10 years older than my than myself. That okay. was to me, that was worst advice because I ended up I did date someone older than me, and that was probably one of the worst people I ever had dated. Anthony. Man, this is a this was a tough question, but I got some advice this past year, and I love this person to life. They still in my life to this day. But they told me 
you have to have multiple horses in your stable. I'm like, what does that even mean? <laughs> what? Like, his mindset towards it is a lot different than my mindset, you know? It's, it's just not fitting for me. You made me nervous there. I was like, I gave you some advice at one time. I'm like, oh, please don't, don't say what I said. Oh, you good. You are good. Said the booty call man, but okay. <laughs> okay, uh, Dominique. Um, to date multiple people at once. I got that advice, and I did not like it. I tried it. I did not like it. You and Anthony talking to the same person for <laughs> advice? <laughs> All the other advice I got was fine. <laughs> Arthur. Uh, use your disability to get dates. Wow. Okay. Oh. Oh. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. And like you in the hospital all this time, man. You know, the speech therapist, you know, the occupational therapist, you know, the recreational therapist, you know, the physical therapist, and you know, the doctors, and all the, the nurses, and the CNAs. And <laughs> listen, they, they went through the security guard, everything. They're like, hey, you got pickings all day. So yeah, that that that's their, um, but you know, uh, it, it, don't take advice, especially marital advice from divorced, broken people, right? Especially about getting back into relationship. Um, uh, so I, I'm weary from who I take uh, marital advice uh, because when I was going through what I was going through, fortunately for me in 2010, uh, Dr. Eric Thomas was in Miami speaking. So I, I spoke to him after and told him my situation. He told me what to do. I did the opposite, hmm. right? Um, and not only, you know, just because I thought I knew better because it, it, I just wasn't open to understanding because that's when I was going through it, you know? And I just thought, well, nobody really understands what, but he was like, hey, you either leave Miami, go up to Cleveland, run after her, bruh, or figure out why she went and accepted a job in a very cold place that she knew that you really couldn't go to. Hmm. So, so at that, that time, it was a reflective thing for me. Yeah. Sometimes we gotta do that. Okay, so I'm, so I'm gonna wait, switch I, up. I, Snooks, I, what's... I just, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I just wanna say this for everyone that's listening to what AP said. He did not say don't take advice from divorced people. He said divorce broken people because some people I think may have missed the broken part because there are people that are, have been divorced. They have some very good information, very good insight, but the brokenness, that's the key word. Stay away from the brokenness. Amen. Okay, so go ahead. Single broken people. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay, let's just, just say it. Let's just say it. Stay away from broken, peri broken people, broken, period. Broken. And broken you know, here's, here's... people who have not healed. There you Thank go. you. Thank yes. you. That part. There you Thank go. you. Because to a certain extent, we're all broken. You know, right. we've all been broken. You know, I, you know, one of my favorite, I'm going off on a tangent, one of my famous tangents. Um, one of my favorite Christmas cartoons was that one where it was the island of the misfits when all the broken toys. Oh. Kind of banded together. Toys. I don't know, misfit toys. Man, I used to love that. And I now as an adult, as a 52 year old man um, that's gone through lots of therapy. And I think because I identified with the broken toys, you know, that I've been tossed back or I, I, I wasn't worthy or something like that. But then there was somebody that loved that toy and brought them to where, you know, you might have just needed, you know, get patched up here and there. you had to allow yourself to be able to get fixed. That's also one of my favorite segments of um, uh, Toy Story when they were with those those broken toys that were like the the, the evil looking ones. They just need a little bit more love. I'm not saying we got to go out and love those folks that are broken because they have to allow themselves to be fixed, but to be healed. To be healed. Let's say that. I like to that. Be yeah. Healed. To be healed, like big set. To be healed. But before we move on, I just want to quickly ask Snooks, what was the worst dating advice you ever received? Oh, to just I there's a man shortage. So I need to just be thankful for what I get. Oh. Why do you don't bring up stuff I said? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you said the worst dating know, advice. You wouldn't tell me to, did you tell me to go date somebody? I told you, you be settled for me. Be thankful. 
opening line. Wow. Say what you get, you don't throw a fit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, basically, that's what he said, too. His opening um, line. <laughs> my worst was um, I was young and I had an uncle. I was in high school. Babe, just tell us what it was. It's, it's bad. So I'm just going to share it real quick. He said, what you need to do is date them girls that have children. Imagine, I was in high school. He said, mess with them girls that have children because it proves they have sex. Oh. <laughs> oh yes. That's advice. not necessarily true now because I done ran into some that have children and then tell me, oh, I'm celibate. <laughs> Whoa. Where they do that at? <laughs> <laughs> no that's that's it so now here's what i want to do i, I want to close this out again to be respectful of your time so i hope but we, we've got quite a few listeners we're listening to in about 32 different countries at this point and you know there's a good mixture between like arthur says he's a loyal listener i know dom listens um i i know overland listens anthony so it's one of those things where they're single as well as married individuals that listen to the podcast, even though it's mm -hmm. called Married Into Crazy. And I always say that it's for those individuals that are either married into crazy or that aspire to be married into crazy. So I'd like each of you, we've covered the worst advice you received. I'd like each of you to offer our audience and each other, you know, some advice that you and your knowledge that you've acquired that you think is a good piece of information or knowledge that you want to share with those other people that could potentially be part of your virtual iron tribe when it comes to dating in today's climate. So we'll start with ladies first. Let's go, Felicia. <laughs> wow. Um, say your question again. I just wanna make sure I hit your point. Just, just, you know, a good, what advice would you give to people that are dating right now, whether male or female, just some good advice that you would wanna impart that you think would help some people as they are navigating the land of being single? Well, first, um, as I said before, love yourself. Um, be honest. Um, know what you want in a relationship. If you're not ready to be in a relationship, don't waste your time or the person's time. Um, open communication. If you want them to know something about your past that may come up later, you know, share it with that person if you feel comfortable. Okay. But I'm going to stop you there only because I want to, is there one? Because you might take up oh, sorry, everything sorry, everybody else is saying. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Because I don't want to be like, man, I was good. Felicia took my answer. <laughs> sorry. I apologize. That's no, that's what, good. No, it's all good stuff. That's what the elderly do sometimes. We just ramble. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, wow. Hey, 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 so, hey, hey. hey. So no, Overland, no, you're no, next. None no, of no, that. No, no. wow. Okay. Um, so in my church, we have this um, saying called choose the right. And for the longest time, I've been afraid to choose love. And so um, through Fawn, who's in our community, Breathe community, she had mentioned she picked up an um, ring. And you don't have the purity ring, but what I want to tell your listeners is like be the part, be the part before you even get there. And the way I'm being the part is because since day one, I've always come to married into crazy, um, wanting that knowledge of being a better wife before I become a wife. And so this ring, um, you can get it on Amazon and it says true love waits. And then first Timothy 412. So just be the part now, like do whatever you got to do, surround yourself around that iron tribe tribe and um be the part love you guys dom mine is all about your mindset uh make sure your mind is right i wasn't letting people in i said that i wanted a relationship um but i wouldn't let anybody in and i would call myself super single and so i had to change my mindset um for people who pray i had to change my prayer from like certain people or certain things to God, please help us be ready for this relationship and for each other when we, when the time is right and bring us both to it when the time is right and for you. Um, and we've had several conversations on that and both of us were praying that and that's what happened. Um, so just make sure that your mind is right and that, um, yeah. 
that you're really, like you were saying, ready for it, um, that you are actually ready for it and actually open to it because it's scary letting someone in all that stuff, um, but it's so good and it's so fun at the same time. Nice. Awesome. Nice. Thank you, ladies. Mm-hmm. Arthur, our senior gentleman. <laughs> wow. He had to say the senior gentleman <laughs> part. Listen, man, I don't even know what that feels like. I, I still think I'm early 30s or late 20s or right. something. There you go. Um, um, see, now I forgot again what the advice you would impart. Um, Be open to change because if you're going to get into a relationship and already feel and and have this staunch attitude that you're not going to change and you're at this one post, then you're going to be staying at that post alone when it's all done. So figure it out from the beginning. Um, And if you're in a relationship that you're going to go towards marriage, um, plan more on your marriage than your wedding day. Mm. Mm, I like that. Yeah. Vic, Mr. Lick Talk. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, by the way, I'll be checking out y'all, by the way. You know what I'm saying? Y'all are everything. You know what I'm saying? I'll be listening to y'all too, getting some things, and I'll be pulling stuff and I'll be talking about it on Lick Talk. Lick and um, talk. also, my advice to everybody is simple be yourself. Don't try to be something you're not because too many times we put up a mask on and then three months down the road, once we pass the honeymoon phase, the mask comes off and that's what causes a lot of problems when you should just been up front and be you from jump. If they don't like it, they don't like it. Someone gonna like you for who you are. So be yourself. You no go. more Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Maximus Manalo. Man, I'm over here just taking notes because this is a this is powerful advice. Mine is it's not something that was said to me, but it's something that I've seen because I think exposure is something that's huge. So expose yourself to the type of relationship that you want to have because I've seen people who have had unhealthy relationships. And if I'm asking about a good relationship, all they can give me is the best that they have and the best that they have. It's not where I want to take my life. So kicking in with people like uncle e snooks lovey right i got older brother figures in my life i got t i got cb i got lee west they got happy happy marriages happy relationships and man turn to them when you need advice you know we're not in this game on the solo we can run this thing as a team like turn to advice i know i turn to you on an ongoing basis uncle e i got relationship stuff i just hit you up and you set up a 10 15 minute conversation and that's one of the most impactful things like people get paid to do that stuff people get paid to give advice right and man you just imparting that for free because i'm part of your iron tribe like a 10 minute conversation you said you were saving me so much heartbreak in the future like i appreciate you i love you to life for it nice Nice. i appreciate it so i'm gonna run it back up to the top what i want to do is give each and every one of you i know you have different backgrounds we haven't talked about your occupations or your passions other than vic but I know that everyone has things that they're passionate about and they're going on. So I want to give you in closing a quick spot to be able to shout out. If you want people to follow you, reach out to you, um, take a look at your business or your passion. Um, let's start with Anthony, run it back up and just kind of tell us where we can follow you, where we can see you, let us know what you're about and how we can support you. Yeah, absolutely. The passions reside in helping people to go to the next level, awakening the kings and queens within, um, connecting people with information, revelation, and inspiration. And that's just my mission statement. You know, I, I have a mission statement, something that I run every situation through. So, um, man, get, get a mission statement. How are you going to lead your life? What is that one sentence? What is that thing that you're going to do for either yourself or the people around you? And just get that all squared away. You can reach me at on Facebook, send me a friend request and um, Anthony, Anthony Max Manalo at, at Facebook.com and we can run it from there. Thank you. Vic. Uh, yes, sir. Um, like I said, I want to thank y'all for having me on. Um, y'all, y'all check out the podcast. Look at talk where we give it entertainment and enlightenment. We be dropping dimes, you know what I'm saying? We about helping people as well, you know what I'm saying? Also, if you want to get a hold of me, it's Victor Jones on Facebook. Um, Instagram is Look Talk Podcast or Real V Jones. Um, Twitter is Real V Jones. Get to me either one. I will fall back and I will respond. Amen. Arthur. Um, I have a podcast named Appreciation and Praise Show. 
every Sunday morning, 10 a.m. You can catch it on all platforms. Um, I'm also a math teacher and I teach disabled students. Uh, and I'm an entertainment consultant as well as uh, running a nonprofit organization called Stress 411 Inc., which uh, capital, well, emphasizes on entertainment professionals. Uh, my mentor from 1994 until he passed away was a, a gentleman named Chris Lighty, um, very prominent uh, gentleman. Um, and uh, this nonprofit is to help individuals like himself that are executives in the entertainment industry going to things as well as those in the armed forces, those that are police, as well as essential um, workers um, and using music and the arts to help uh, bring down their stress and relieve their stress to have a better mental health. Nice, nice. So you catch me on all um, things. I think it's AP underscore AP, AP underscore strong. Oh man. Instagram and my name Arthur Papillon on Facebook and yeah find other ways I, I'm just happy to be here thank you again you guys <laughs> I love your your podcast um Victor I love your podcast as well um and and, and I listen um because this is what I did for seven years while you guys were living regular lives I was living a quarantine life so um yeah love gotcha. it love y'all thanks thanks thank you. Dominique Mine is, so my mission statement is my mission is to impact the lives of others in a way that forces them to level up and change someone else's life because we are far, we, because together we're far greater than alone. Um, so I am looking to impact people's lives and my main vehicle right now through that is biohacking, helping people with their health and get healthy on the inside um, because you never know what's going on. And I want to help people before something happens um, and even after something happens. Um, but yeah, so I want to help people in their health and build their wealth so that they can build a legacy and be authentically them. Um, and you can find me on social media sunshine mixed with a bit of hurricane because that's my personality um <laughs> but if you look up dominique Montiel, you should be able to find it nice nice overland thank you guys thank you for having us um and the panel i i got what i wanted so um for me i am a caregiver here in utah by trade but i just love helping everybody so you can find me um under Overland AFO, A -F -O, and you'll see all my social media, or you could go to Breathe University and you'll see me all over the page. Yeah, Miss Felicia. Well, I've, I've really enjoyed myself today and meeting everyone. And thank you both for reaching out to me. Um, <clears throat> who am I? <laughs> well, basically <laughs> I'm a, I empower uh, women who have um, dealt with uh, domestic violence. I've also speak with uh, in groups of women who have lost a child because I have lost a child also. Um, I just try to keep people encouraged. You can find me on Facebook under Felicia Pridgen. I'm trying to build different avenues, but that's where I'm at right now. Um, about a year or so ago, I was part of a book, uh, book that was released. It was about 11 of us who shared a portion of our story. So I'm still working on my whole book. I'll, I'll have two that's coming out, one dealing with domestic violence and one dealing with uh, a mother's loss. So hopefully I'll reach back out to you guys real soon when those are ready to be published. Amen, amen. Well, we wanna thank each and every one of you for participating in the singles panel. We hope that so many individuals out there are gonna be able to take these nuggets, the, this knowledge that you were able to impart and apply it to their lives, you know, and one thing that we do on every one of our podcasts is uh, we give two for the road. So we're going to pull two. Wait, what if I wanted to say something? Did you all see, <laughs> let me just, he totally bypasses me. I was like, yeah, okay, the clock like I already had it in my mind what, what my best advice was and everything. And he just was like, uh -huh. okay, forget Stop. him. We hear her. Stop. She just, whatever. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> What's your best advice, babe? Your best. It's too late now. No, never too late. There, please. No, I'm just never playing. Too late, never, I just too like late, to, <laughs> never too late. I like to give lovey a hard time. No, I just want to say too, um, 
one of like the best advice I will always tell everyone, do not ever settle and don't Mm. settle for anything less from anyone and don't settle for anything less from yourself. It always, it is always going to start with yourself. Make sure that, you know, we say we're married into crazy and crazy. Sometimes it is just really crazy, but it's always going to stand for compassionate, being real, accountable, zealous, and yielding. And when we talk about communication, we need to make sure that we're not just communicating to say that we communicate it. Communicate in compassion, because the way that you speak to someone is going to determine what they hear also. That doesn't mean you have to be fake. You can be real. Make sure that you're accountable. You're doing what you say that you're going to do. Be zealous. Be zealous for, and and don't just be zealous in the relationship when it's time to tell someone what they did wrong. Because, oh, then I'm really excited about, oh, wait till I see him. You know, we, we do that a lot of times in our relationships. I'm really excited to tell you what you did wrong, but I'm not excited to give you the praise or I'm not excited to make you feel like, you want to feel sometimes it's not about me. It's never really just about me. Well, it is about me, but I'm just saying (laughs) Um, (laughs) it's about the other person. When I'm able to lift up my spouse, my spouse, this reciprocity, he, he lifts me up also, you know, we have to learn how to yield to others. It's not always going to be my way, but that's just what I wanted to say. I thought it was pretty good. Lovey totally <laughs> bypassed me. I think it was so. great. Can, can, Thank can, you I have a, for can I ask a question? <laughs> yes. Can can, can um, you guys give us some sort of advice on what we may do so that we're not single next time we see you? <laughs> Thank pressure. you guys. I'm going to be honest <laughs> with you. All the answers that you said, I, I, I'm like, yeah, I like that. that. Oh, yeah, I like that too. You know, I, so I had to really think outside of the box because everybody was taking what I was going to say. So I was like, well, he said it already. Yeah, we're not being trite. It's one of those things where, honestly, uh, this is going to sound really bad, but when this comes out this week, go back and listen to it because it's not about us. We weren't the ones talking. Mm-hmm. It's about you guys. And I, I have to agree that the advice that was collectively shared mm-hmm was absolutely amazing. The manuscript is already within you. It's in each and every one of you. And again, this Iron Tribe has been formed right here virtually in this particular call. And the best advice is the advice that you gave each other and that you shared, because I think that's that's what communities used to do right. before this, right? They would come together in the village and they would share knowledge. So that way that the village could flourish. That's exactly what you did today. That's exactly what you did today. And, and that's one thing about even the whole Married in the Crazy podcast, all that we've been through. I mean, I feel like um, we went through so much in the very beginning. It's like, okay, so now we'll be married 24 years in January. So it's like the Lord was like, okay, so now you can go and you can share with others how you were able to sustain this. You know, we, we were, we, we had to learn how to be real. We had to learn how to not just, okay, I had to learn how to communicate. We, it wasn't effective in the very beginning. Sometimes we didn't talk because, oh, I don't want to step on his leg, uh, leg on, on his feet or, you know, walking Whoa. on eggshells or, you know, those yeah, kind of things. Caught that, right? She didn't step on toes. <laughs> yeah. She bypassed yeah. toes and went straight for the leg. I'm going like, for shins, That means you're laying on the floor. With the high heels, the with the steel boots. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Real talk though, if I could actually say one thing, well, one thing that we did learn that was a resounding yes on this panel, stay off Tinder. (laughs) Tinder (laughs) Stay off Tinder, no booty calls. Yeah, Tinder was was, was, was not one, no booty call. But just in closing real quick, um, just like you guys were saying, um, relationships take work. And I think that's the biggest thing that a lot of people don't want to do. They don't want to work. It's not always going to be, um sugar cookies you know every day you're gonna have the arguments you're gonna have the disagreements but you're just gonna have to dis you know come together and that's where communication comes in to make it you know to get to those 24 years that you guys have been able to share because then i'm sure it hasn't always been the greatest times you know mm-hmm. you've dealt with a lot of things so that's the thing i think a lot of people don't want to work on mm-hmm. is their relationships and keep the communication and uplifting the other person and so on and so forth. Yeah. At another time, I'd like to know um, how Uncle E, you ain't killed that dude. 
I'm sorry, I know it's off the subject, but that was another episode. I, I, well, I kind of know that too. I, I, when I, 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 I always wanted to oh, ask you that. So I was like, and Uncle I knew the men's call number. wasn't the place to do it, but bruh, I have to tell you, I have to commend you, bruh. Yes. Because okay, that's a whole other podcast. I, it, it, and we, we touched it, upon it. If in I one... see him today and I know that's him, I'm killing him. I just want you to know that. I appreciate that. Oh. Record. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that another say. time. But look, yeah, one thing yeah, I want to do bad. is uh, the way we close every single one of our podcasts is with the I Can Can Sorry. for couples. And so we always pull, right? One for the men, one for the ladies. Um, and so what we want to do is I'm going to pull for the fellas. And for if there is that special person or if there's an opportunity to give somebody that you do care about, whether it's a romantically inclined relationship or otherwise, this is this should be your focus for the week. Oh, okay. So mine says, I can give my undivided attention to my partner. So perhaps there's somebody that you are interested in or somebody that is in your life or, you know, one of those individuals, or if you're not in a romantic relationship right now, but somebody that you do care about, we all have relationships, but give that individual that has special standing in your life, your undivided attention. And mine says, I can trust my partner. So I can trust that Levy is going to do what he said he's going to do. Are you going to put the fan up in Kiana's room like you? Sometime this weekend. <laughs> Sometime this weekend. I will get it done. You know, and the last thing is, because um, we don't get an opportunity to say it often enough when we do interviews like this, um, and I'm just going to put this out there. Every one of our podcasts uh, since later or earlier this year, um, in our effort um, towards social justice, what we do is we, we recognize and we, we acknowledge eight minutes and 46 seconds of silence at the very end of every one of our podcasts. And um, we're doing that for the remainder of this year and potentially longer. So uh, we wanna thank each and every one of you for participating in our podcast today. We are enriched because of your presence. Really? And as we always say, until the next time, be blessed. Bye-bye. One time for